in 2009, I think it was, the District Council identified this area as um, in need of better and more facilities for young people. We've done lots of surveys, consultations, workshops with young people over the last four years, and there's been this growing consensus that as much as we love all of our facilities up here, there we've outgrown them. As you can see by the existing pavilion, um, it's rather outdated, it's dilapidated, um, and is in need of a number of quite serious repairs. Because for things like getting the whole community together, for the, the pop-up cafes, for events that we have up here, this building's not accessible. The outdoor space is lovely, and that's what people come here for, but we need a better building to be able to support those community events. We are an established youth club. We've been running now for over 10 years. To have a dedicated space where we could really bed in, it would be fantastic. We want to take kicks against you. I thought we come up ready to go I've been doing football here for the past five years, and I've been uh, doing it with uh, children between the ages of three to seven. Those poor children have had a really, really tough year, so I think any kind of outdoor activities are probably the way forward for the next couple of years. So to, to make the outdoor activity supported by a comfortable uh, and improved building would make all the difference in the world. So one thing I did many years ago it was a project with my students, and I've asked them to really reimagine the pavilion. And they came up with all sorts of ideas, and at the end of the project we organized an exhibition Around that time, I also started running a, a pop-up cafe as a way to encourage further use of the pavilion. There was some equipment that we were very keen to get for the pediatric intensive care unit, and the pop-up cafe Sundays became very successful. Uh, and on the Sunday afternoon, we came down with the ambulance and with some of the people that work on the children's intensive care unit. It was fantastic, and we managed to rent quite a bit of money. No such thing as luxury when it comes to your physical and mental health, really, it's, it's vital. What lockdown has shown us is there's been a vast increase in mental health difficulties in young people. We've seen um, demand for services increase by about 50%, and what we know with young people is they need a place to socialise, they need a place to be active and to stimulate their bodies and minds, and so having a community space, both indoors and outdoors, allows that flexibility to have um, young people engaged in a variety of different activities to meet their different needs. The plans for this um, building and for this area of, of Botley I think is really great because it's a real multi-use, multi-generational space. You've got um, the opportunity to have things going on from really, really small children um, all the way through to older people. Well, I think any new building brings with it environmental impacts. The challenge for this one is to make sure that it's an environmentally friendly development and that it's not just friendly, it's actually positive. Emily asked us to help with um, looking at the plans. We kind of constantly pushed them to try to be more sustainable in the way they were kind of, kind of design the building because it seems unfortunate to kind of design a building that's got to last for 50, 60 years if it's not sustainable and meeting the kind of objectives of the future of, of our neighborhood and the planet. It's going to make a huge difference to the community here, not just for, for us and our generation, but for, you know, for years to come. In terms of um, mental well-being, having facilities like this where people can go, get involved in activities, informal and informal, and spend time outdoors and just socialise with their friends. And it's just so important, and I think we really, really need to get behind this now and really invest in our young people.